I'm Stacy. And I'm Kyle. And this week we have a very talented actress with us, the very, very beautiful Lauren Ashley Carter. Hi, everybody. Um, she has been in The Woman, and I don't know if she knows this, but Stacy and I are completely obsessed with The Woman. Yes, yes, I know. I, I, <laughs> I, I also, I'm also obsessed. So It's such a good movie, and, and everyone in that movie did such an amazing job. Um, and we talked to Andrew for our last episode, and uh, he was just, he's the nicest guy. He's really nice, and so we figured we, we we're going to get the whole cast of uh, The Woman on here eventually. Oh, that's cool. That's awesome. Yeah, I I, uh, I heard the little snippet that you put online, or right. on the Facebook page. My mom likes his voice. <laughs> just, Is that your mom? Yeah, that's the first thing she said. First thing, I, I love his voice. I'm like, okay, that's kind of crazy. <laughs> um, I didn't know that was your mom. That's awesome. Yeah, so she supports what I do. <laughs> um, so how did you uh, get into the movie business? Um, well, I, um, I guess, uh, I went, I moved from, uh, Cincinnati, Ohio to New York. Uh, that's where I went to college. Um, but I'm from a small town in Ohio called Maslin. Go Tigers. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I came here, uh, our conservatory had a showcase like many conservatories do. And, uh, from that I found my agency and, uh, and I just started, I moved here right away and started auditioning for things. And, uh, the first thing I met Andrew was through auditioning for a film called Rising Stars, which we filmed in Texas, uh, which is like a family film. Oh, we've and, seen it. Oh, oh. <laughs> we yes. lo- yeah, we watched everything. <laughs> I had, um, it was so funny because I, I worked, <laughs> I worked at a family video store when I was in college. And I, like, I worked there so much. I was like, and I was also going to a conservatory where, you know, you just, you're constantly either in school or performing or doing something. So I eventually lost my mind and just never went back. I just, okay. just didn't show up and just didn't go. And, um, I, uh, and then I, and instead of just quitting and just letting that be that, I called and made up this insane story about like having a nervous breakdown and going to a hospital, which never happened. I just <laughs> lied about this ridiculous thing. And when it was really, you know, I just didn't want to work anymore. So anyway, long story longer, I, uh, I leave and I, you know, um, I did the movie Rising Stars and I came back to New York. And I get this Facebook message from this girl that worked at Family Video, who was still working at Family Video. And she says, so I'm processing movies the other day, and uh, and we see your face on the cover <laughs> of the title, Rising Stars, and uh, and we, we were all talking about you. And I said, oh, I don't, I don't know how to take that, but um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's... Um, that's a good Rising Stars story. So that was kind of your big break then. Uh, that was when you met, met Andrew and his awesome haircut in the movie. And um, <laughs> <laughs> I brought that up with the show. I couldn't help it. I was like, who did your hair, man? <laughs> he wanted his um, his mohawk or faux hawk or I don't – I think it was – what happened was he got in the chair and Liz, who was our awesome, amazing uh, makeup artist um, and hairstylist, she, you know, she just said, you know, you have great hair and we're just going to let it go. And, and he just, he kept putting it up, you know, and putting it up. And so finally that became his signature. Look. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's how, before that I did a film that I was overseas for, for a while called The Prodigies. It was this motion capture animated movie yep. Um, yep. that we worked on for a while. But, um, but that was the only experience I had had other than student films before Rising Stars. And then, um, yeah. And so uh, basically Andrew... Uh, one day he just overheard me. I was talking about horror movies and, uh, I love them. You know, I grew up watching them among many others, but that was, you know, my father, I would see my father on the weekends and he, since I was five years old, you know, he let me rent horror movies from the video store along with my Rocky and Bullwinkle. Yes. (laughs) And like every normal five-year-old girl. (laughs) And, um, uh, so anyway, I was talking about this and Andrew sits, you know, overhears me and he goes, Oh my gosh, he goes, this is perfect. I, you know, I, when I saw you, all I could think about was how I wanted to introduce you to my friend Lucky. And we just start talking about horror movies. And then all of a sudden I realized he's talking about Lucky McKee. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that is your friend. <laughs> and, you know, and then, um, anyway, so we start talking about May cause May is just one of my absolute favorite movies. Um, so I was just 
floored by that. And, um, you know, and he talked about, oh, next year we want to make this movie. But, you know, me, I'm thinking, oh, yeah, sure, that's awesome. You hear this stuff all the time. You know, someone will talk to you about a project or and then you never hear about it again. So, um, but yeah, sure, sure enough, I ended up getting a phone call from Andrew and Lucky was in town and uh, Lucky and I had a million conversations over the phone and um, an email. And so we finally met up and we were talking for hours and hours and hours. And, um, and uh, throughout this weekend, you know, he, uh, he decided that he was going to definitely put me in the film as uh, Peggy. And, uh, and everything went pretty fast after that. Her Peg, the character Peg was like, I don't know, the focal point of the movie for me. It was like so much emotion in that character. It, it, you did an amazing job, and I, I, I don't know. I, I told Andrew, it's, it's your eyes. You really bring yeah. out like that emotion, like in the one scene with uh, the song uh, "Distracted" was playing, and you yeah. were on the football field, and it was like the camera kind of followed you as you kind of fell to the grass. It was, I was like, oh my god, I feel like I'm, I'm gonna cry too. <laughs> <laughs> That was the that was the hope that was the wish we wanted everyone weeping and uh, have soggy britches and all that. <laughs> if you can get soggy britches in a horror movie, then you have succeeded. Exactly. <laughs> that, that was no. That was a. Uh, you know, we talked about that shot for a long time, and he had me. You know, he sent me the song. He that was the one song that he knew uh, that was going to be. You know, at that certain point before that, you know, Spillane, uh, Sean Spillane was writing all of these songs as we were making the film for the the parts. But that was one that had already been written for um, for the film. So I listened to it a lot. But, you know, and you and you can read and you can talk about how the the shot's going to be. But it was it was really intense when we did it because the camera, you know, he really was. He had the camera and was falling with me. And there were just all these people in my face, you know, during that shot, which is this very, you know, very emotional, um, uh, very personal thing. And, um, <laughs> and when we were doing it, I just thought, oh, my, this is so <laughs> intrusive right now. <laughs> and, um, and I, you know, we kept uh, we there was supposed to basically be a couple tears, you know, falling, um, which you see in the in the beginning of that shot when I do go down. And then um, all of a sudden, Lucky says, all right, I just want you to lose it now, you know, while we were filming. And I just thought, oh, I was not ready for this. That's um, and, and to set up that shot took, you know, the, the crew is amazing. Andrew always gets the best crews ever. I love these guys um, and girls. They're amazing. And um, and I just thought to reset for this shot is just going to, you know, and we're outside the the light there was insane how it would go, you know, in and out. There were clouds. It was beautiful, but very tricky. And so finally I just started thinking about all this and my anxiety was just swarming and I just started melting down and crying. So it really worked <laughs> for nothing else. It, was it worked good. for all of us. <laughs> we were crying with you. <laughs> I'm so glad. I, I love making people sad. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Oh well, you know, if you can't make them happy, I, I don't that's know. true. Make that them is depressed. True. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to affect you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, going back to Rising Stars, I had a question about that movie. Yes. Uh, in that movie, you were from Zanesville, Ohio. <laughs> right. And I had to bring that up because I had the question: mm -hmm. Is if you've ever been to Zanesville? I've never. I've uh, I've driven past it. But I've never been to Zanesville. I think our probably some football game has had to do with people from there. But I'm not sure. It seems like one of those places where it's like bring your tractor to school day. <laughs> it's, you know. it's very bad. I'm it's in that very... town right now. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are you serious? No, no, I don't live in Zanesville, but I live in a town just like that. Just, oh, yeah. <laughs> bring your tractor to school. It's awful. <laughs> oh, no. Horror fans no, don't I... fit in here. <laughs> I've, no, I've never been there. There's a couple places in Ohio that you just don't go either for reasons that, you know, it's a tornado town. Like Xenia, Ohio. Like Gummo. Yes, exactly. Is that a Gummo reference? Yeah. Yes. Such a good movie. Places it is. you don't go. And yeah, there's this town, Xenia, and it's if tornadoes touch down in Ohio, they always touch down in Xenia. And yeah. people live there. I I can't understand. I think I think that movie had an effect on it. As soon as that movie came out, they're like, all right, all tornadoes go to Xenia. Because that yeah. movie, like, <laughs> give up. 
Let's, let's just give up. <laughs> well, you spoke about uh, Lucky McGee before. What was it like working with him? I know he's very talented, and like you said, May, we talked about May on, uh, I think, the second episode we did of the show. Uh, we, we love Angela, and we love the movie May, and we love Lucky. What was it like working with Lucky? Um, it, it was great. Lucky's, you know, I think, well, like all of us, really, in the crew, but um, he's very intense, and it uh, doesn't help that he's, you know, like, six feet taller than I am. <laughs> um, but, but he's also, you know, when uh, that's, it made me laugh so hard. I'm sure you guys all saw the video, um, the YouTube video of the guy at Sundance. That right. Up. Yeah. And when he started saying, you know, how, um, like he was a misogynist and it was, um, obscene and all these horrible things, it really, I mean, it was horrible. And he was so hurt by it because he is, he's such a sensitive and loving person. But if you knew Lucky at all, you knew that he's the biggest cheerleader for women in general. And um, and he's, you know, he's very caring about everyone in his films, but especially the women he takes, uh, you know, he's he's very sensitive to everyone's needs. And um, and uh, he, he he won't stop uh, until he gets something the way that he wants it, which, you know, is very much how I am as well. And um you know, we would do, there was a time when we went through the entire alphabet and back again for takes on a, on a shot. Oh, wow. (laughs) It was, or a setup, I mean, um, and yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty miraculous. You know, halfway through it, you're like, are you kidding me? And then when you finally get it done, (laughs) everybody's laughing again and, and you're like, yeah, this is what we're doing. Um, but no, he was, he was incredible. And it, you know, and it's also one of these things when, um, when it it's happening and there were a lot of people involved in the woman, you know, there's so many setups where the whole family is involved and, um, and everybody was so, you know, he, he was a great leader in keeping everyone together and, um, and then focused the whole time, you know, he's, he's there with you in the shit when you're in it. And, uh, and I don't think that, you know, you can say that about a lot of directors or people. The funny thing is you say that Lucky's a sensitive guy. I think every diehard horror fan, no matter what horror, like what genre of horror you are, whether it's the goriest and, the, and you know, the with the torture and all that kind of stuff, yeah. at heart, we all cry when we watch Old Yeller. We all, you know, it's like <laughs> we all have our, like, our uh, guilty pleasures and we're all sensitive people. I think everyone is. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, he, he and his father uh, – yeah, they also cried during the poor, we call it poor, poor little pig, poor little pig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, my nickname during filming was Prego Waffle. Nice. <laughs> Beautiful. Prego, Prego, Pego. I got the, I got the, the Prego part. What was the waffle? Oh, well, you know, Ego Waffles. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. It was a pre- oh. I, I don't know. It's Right over my head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the most clever thing I've ever said, but, um. It was cute at the time. You uh, also mentioned Andrew Vanden Houten. Yeah. Uh, we've worked with him three different times. As far right. as I know, there could be more. Yeah, but... no. So yeah, these, um, this, the, the last film we just shot, Jug Face. Yes. Um, is he someone you want to continue to work with? Oh, absolutely. He, um, you know, like I said, Andrew just gets the best, best crews, uh, together to work for these and um and I, you know most of the people that are my best friends now are uh, crew members and and actors from the films um uh, Michael David Bevins who did costumes for Rising Stars the woman and for Jug Face he's just a dear friend of mine um and I just saw him 2 days ago actually and um you know and every time it's you know once Andrew hires people we all just start calling each other and talking and uh and it's just it's a really exciting group to be around and inspiring and Chris Heinrich who uh, pulled focus for the woman and was the DP for Jug Face um uh, you know just moved back to New York and he's been friends with Andrew for a few years now and everybody um everybody just cares very much about each other and we're all very intense people so <laughs> So it works. Well, what drew you to the woman? Uh, was did you read the book before? Um, was it just the script that you got and you just fell in love with I, it? No, yeah, I did. Um, I did read the book, but that um, it was the script that that really um, that really got me. And uh, and you know, and it was 
it was funny because, and just talking with Lucky and he had been talking also to Pollyanna during the entire, you know, before we started uh, shooting as well. And just hearing, um, you know, what they were saying to each other, you know, and then I also got to talk to Angie a little bit over email before we started shooting. And, um, and it was, it was something that, um, that I've always wanted to play, you know, as, especially watching horror movies being, you know, a young person and, you know, probably uh, Jamie Lee Curtis was my favorite horror heroine for years. Yes. And, um, <laughs> and just, <laughs> I, I perpetually, like, I just love being scared. It's, um, it's something that draws me more than anything. And, um, and I, and I just loved the stillness of it all and um and and the shock of of things that are that are not said and um and in those quiet moments it was um it was absolutely something that I wanted to do and uh, I was I was saddened that I didn't get to be part of the gore at the end <laughs> uh, no I, it's good it's good we were rooting for you yeah we want you to be in the next one that's right exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly I know that's what I said in the next one I get to get bloody but um yeah, so uh, it, it um, you know, I mean, Angie's Angie's character was one of my favorites as well, and I just couldn't, I couldn't wait to be with her and uh, uh, during the filming and to watch her and, um, but it was actually even, you know, it's even better when when you get there, which it all it always is because you can't imagine, but you know, the scenes with Polly, I mean, when we saw her and we got in there with her, I just said, holy shit, (laughs) (laughs) for real. And, um, and she, I mean, until, you know, for the first couple of weeks, I was actually genuinely terrified of her. (laughs) Um, and, uh, and Sean Bridgers was just such a surprise because when you read the script, like the character of Chris Cleek on paper is, is one thing, you know, and, um, and, and, you know, you put whatever you have in your mind of things that you've seen and experienced and how it's going to play out. But when we got there and watching him, it was just, you know, it was he was completely different than what I had imagined in the best possible way. And he was I, the most hated thing in that movie. Yes, he was. <laughs> I know. But he, pl- he played it off so well, though. I know when I saw it, you know, I didn't see it. I did not see the film until it uh, it screened at Sundance. And I was just terrified. And uh, and when I watched, I was just cracking up at him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because you're when you're in the scene and you're in the moment and everything, and you know you have all these things to focus on. Unfortunately, you can't really enjoy someone's performance all the time because you have to think about your own. Um, but when I saw it, I just enjoyed the crap out of him. He's terrific. It was just. One of my favorite villains ever. We brought that up with Andrew, and he told us that we would actually, uh, our opinions would change on him when we see Jugface. Apparently, it's, it's like a 360. Uh, yes. It's a build up, and, and I'm like, we, we told him we can't really see that yet because we've only really seen him as that, that dark, evil father, and <laughs> it was just, he pulled it off so well. I mean, he had everyone hating him. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's, and it's true, though. Yeah, when you see, when you see Jugface, it's, uh, it's a whirlwind, and he was so helpful, absolutely. Um, he, and he's just really, whenever you, I don't know if you've spoken with him, but you will, and he's just the most down-to-earth, you know, southern boy. Larry Fessenden and I just would crack up, you know, him smoking <laughs> his pipe um, and scratching his beard and talking about the Civil War. <laughs> but he's incredible. He would sit with me before you know every day and we would go through the script together and and um and any questions that i had and uh you know and chad kinkle who wrote and directed jug face as well was incredible just um you never know even if you talk to a director before you shoot until you start working with them and uh i was i was uh very pleased with the entire experience but sean bridgers is phenomenal and pollyanna as well you know pollyanna and i she's like <laughs> when you talk to her she's just so um nurturing and um and kind and just very earth mother (laughs) and you know just smiling like the most gorgeous smile you've ever seen and then you just see her with all this black crap in her teeth and (laughs) dunk under her fingernails eating people's fingers (laughs) he deserved it though 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, going back to Jugface, since we brought it up, and another Sean, Sean Young, is your mother in Jugface? Yes. How was that working with Sean? That was awesome. I um, The story of Sean Young goes back to Rising Stars. When um, Andrew talked about her, you know, and uh, I said, you said something about, oh, yeah, I have to call Sean Young. I said, you do not have Sean Young's phone number. <laughs> he says, I did a movie with her. Of course I do. I said, but you guys aren't friends. He goes, yes, we are. He goes, I swear we are. He goes, I'll call her right now. I said, yeah, okay, go ahead. Go call Sean Young right now. I can't wait. <laughs> And, you know, we get her voicemail and I'm just flipping out because I heard her voicemail. Like, I can't I was probably jumping up and down for the next six hours as Blade Runner was another one. You know, I would watch that with my father um, over and over again. And we loved Sean Young. I mean, I would even watch Dr. Jekyll and Ms. Hyde when I was you know, <laughs> any any possible thing. But, you know, Fatal Instinct was a favorite of mine. I would rent at the video store, um, which was the parody movie about basic instinct and fatal attraction right? <laughs> that she was in. And I just adored her in that movie. And, uh, um, and uh, with Cheryl Lynn, who, uh, Twin Peaks Cheryl Lynn, <laughs> who was in that, who was gorgeous. Yes. I think. Um, so anyway, then later, Shine uh, called me a few times, you know, just saying, because uh, Andrew just kept saying, we got to get you to play Lauren's mom. We have to get you to play Lauren's mom. And it became this joke, you know, that, oh, yeah, Sean Young's going to be my mom someday. And so she'd call me and say, <laughs> hey, hey, daughter. And I'd say, hi, mom. And this went, this went on since Rising Stars. And then um, Jug, so Andrew sent me the script for Jug Face. And he always, Andrew sends me scripts, um, would send me scripts just for my opinion, you know, not to be in them, but just, you know, right. hey, think about this. And so he had sent me this and, um, and I read it and I, you know, I said, this is really very good. I, you know, I like it a lot. And he goes, well, you know, I'm thinking about you for, um, for Ada. And, uh, and I said, oh, that would be, uh, that would be phenomenal. And, uh, he goes, and, um, we're thinking, he goes, I'm not sure, but, uh, we talked to Sean Young about playing your mother. And I was just head over heels about the idea. <laughs> and so when um when she finally decided to, you know, I can't I can't tell you how many text messages and emails I got from my father, you know, ask her this, ask her this. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you're like, yeah, absolutely never ever will I do that, Dad. Um but uh she was amazing. Uh from day one. She's she just she knows what she's doing and she looks so great on camera. She just <laughs> it's just one of those she's, things when she's a natural star. Yeah, you just know. You're like, oh, she. This is why she is who she is. She, she's amazing, and um, yeah, she just always. She had the most interesting things too. She would just, um, I, I don't know. I, I can't imagine that she, you know, sat in her room and thought about these before the day. But she would come in and we'd do something, and she goes, "Let me try this," or "What if you try the shot over here?" And <laughs> um, but she really did. She really did uh, the best work and. And she was really helpful and very, she's very much a mother, you know, the whole time she's, you know, always worried about people. I mean, I don't know if you heard about the tick situation we had. No. no. Oh yeah. There, it was basically raining ticks in Tennessee when we oh. Oh. it was a bad season uh, and we were really out in the sticks and um, everybody was picking ticks off of each other every day and doing head checks and back checks and <laughs> All kinds of fun things. So we got really close really quickly. And uh, and Sean was just, you know, she was right there in it with us. We were all, you know, going to the bathroom in the woods sometimes and <laughs> late nights just stinking to high heaven. And she never once complained. She never once got pissy or, I mean, she was just, you know, no special requests. She had everything we had. And uh, I... I'd be thrilled to work with her again. She actually moved uh, to the East Coast recently, and uh, she's been so kind as to invite me to see films with her. And oh, that's um, amazing. Yeah, and she has worked uh, Michael David Bevins, uh, and her became really great friends too. And they got to work together recently on a film, uh, which I'm so excited to see. She plays a therapist, which is going to be Whoa. um. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I can't, I can't wait to work with her again. She was fantastic. I think the funny thing about her is I remember 
I, as I got to the age where I can kind of tell who an actress was and I can, you know, I start to follow them more. You right. kind of you develop to where you're like, oh, I need I need to know what else this person's been in. I went I went back as a as a teenager and watched Ace Ventura, and yeah. I was like, oh my yeah. god, that's her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Blinks is out. Yeah, it's weird when that happens when you when you just don't remember people that you you right. love with as an adult. It's just it's so funny. I, I was like, I cannot believe she was Einhorn. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, who were your influences uh, getting into the the whole movie business? Did you have uh, celebrities that you looked up to when you were younger? Oh yeah, it was you know, and it would always change, you know, just like a just like a, a crush on you know a celebrity that you liked. It was the same kind of thing with performances for me, and it would evolve. And um, but when I the first person who, which is so cliche, but the first person that I loved when I was very young was uh, Marilyn Monroe and it was so I was very young I was probably about four or so and I found a a button uh with her face on it and I just thought she was so beautiful and I didn't know who she was and so my mother you know went to the library with me and I bought all I bought I rented all her movies from the library and um I just was just captivated by her and then I I told my grandmother who loves you know still mostly watches black and white films and uh, in, in tapes with a VHS tape from Turner Classic Movies. She's got, like, cases of VHS tapes from taping yes, movies yes. because she can't possibly go and buy them. Um, and uh, anyway, so I told her about Meryl Monroe, and she goes, oh, I can't believe you like her. This just, no, she just couldn't have it. So uh, <laughs> she was not a fan of Marilyn. So she, um, you know, she showed me Audrey Hepburn and um, and then Claudette Colbert and Carol Lombard and um, and then uh, eventually, uh, you know, I felt Betty Davis was probably um, when I got really crazy. And uh, she, I remember she uh, she told me I was a very awkward looking kid and uh, big glasses and braces and stringy hair. And um, she told me, you have to watch this movie, Lauren. It's called Now Voyager. And you remind me of Betty Davis so much. So I watched the movie and um and I was so flattered, you know, when she she turns into this gorgeous woman and um you know it's like this fairy tale and I was so inspired and I went to my grandmother and I said I watched the movie I watched the movie she says oh my gosh don't you think you look just like her I said oh thank you grandma she goes you know at the beginning <laughs> <laughs> and I was I was crushed a little bit but um so Betty Davis was a big one for me and then um. Uh, you know, one of my favorite uh, performances, um, Ellen Burstyn is so incredible. Um, yes, she's one of my favorites as well. So thank uh, you for saying that. <laughs> yes, I, uh, I I have this, you know, and I, I met a couple other actresses like that. You know, I, I'm like, I can't wait until I'm 60. I'm going to be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but of course, young Ellen Burstyn is amazing. Meryl Streep um, is phenomenal. I, uh, I probably watched Death Becomes Her about 3,000 times. And uh, that's one of my favorite Streep roles just because of her uh, her vocal performance is incredible. I just love the things she does with her voice. That uh, She's hilarious. She's a great comedic act- actress as well. And uh, Gina Rowlands, um, Holly Hunter <laughs> was probably one of my favorites as well, especially in high school. Um, I loved Holly Hunter and uh, Madeline Kahn. Oh, Madeline. <laughs> <laughs> She's probably also one. Um, but uh, yeah, Carol Lombard was was a big one for me as well. What drew you to Holly Hunter? Um, I you know I had a a few people give me references. I had done this um uh this show and I had this southern accent and everything. And uh, and then I started watching uh, films of hers, and uh, and there's just you know I, I it's like this quality that you see in you know younger actresses or like you know Ellen Page or something just where they can so much they can get away with just being themselves and being so unique and wonderful to watch, and um and not that that's anything that I aspire to do or that I think that I'm equally interesting because actually I'm I'm not. Um, but I love, I just love watching her. She's one of those people. And, um, there's a couple actresses like that where I, and now, and, and now because I'm going to say this, I can't say who they are, 
but there's some actors <laughs> that, that I think aren't the most talented, but I just love watching them. And it, it doesn't matter. They could just be saying poop, poop, pa- paper bag or something. And I, <laughs> That's already interesting to me. Like that, that yeah, exactly. Has my <laughs> I'm like a cat. I just, it doesn't take much to entertain me. <laughs> exactly. But, uh, but you know, it's funny because most of my, I was most impressed by men. Um, it's such a horrible thing to say as a woman. Um, but, you know, but I, there were so many men that I just, I, I mostly watched, uh, you know, Jack Nicholson in The Shining. I would watch that on repeat and I would pause the movie and like do something back that he had done. I would try and memorize the way that he did it. And, uh, Al Pacino was also another one. I mean, I, Panic in Needle Park is one of the most depressing movies in the world, but I just (laughs) didn't stop watching him. Uh, the Godfather, well, the first two Godfather movies, and um, and Michael Keaton, as well. Batman and Beetlejuice were. I could I, when I was younger, like I said, when you get older, you realize who people are, and I cannot believe that Batman was Beetlejuice. It, it blew my mind. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly. Well, and also Bruce Willis in um, Death Becomes Her. Right. I watched that when I was younger, and um, and later on when I hadn't watched it in years, and I realized, you know. Uh, that threw me. I still think that's one of his best performances ever. Yeah, he's yeah. kind of gone downhill and just done, you know, cookie cutter movies lately. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, and it, I was gonna say another one of my most favorite performances is uh, Reese Witherspoon in Freeway with Kiefer Sutherland. Right. I I love, and that's a, I because the first thing I had ever seen her in was Cruel Intentions and whatever that that movie was when she was in the desert, the Disney movie. I can't remember. But uh, I I couldn't stand her in Cruel Intentions. But I think it was just that movie that I really couldn't stand. I, you know, I grew up, my mother's favorite movie was Dangerous Liaisons. So I saw that early on with John Malkovich, who's another um, actor crush I have. And then when I saw Cruel Intentions, I thought, oh, this is rubbish. But then when I saw her in Freeway, I couldn't believe that was the same person. I thought that was just, and, and Amanda Plummer, speaking of Freeway, she's phenomenal. I don't know if I've ever seen Freeway. I don't think I have either. Oh, you guys. Oh, you must. You, 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 we, okay, you watch Freeway together, and then you should have a show just about Freeway. We'll all get together and we'll watch right. Freeway. We'll yeah. call you. We'll also, call you and say hey. Uh, Brittany Murphy plays um, um, like a psychotic lesbian in the film as well, so you should see it just for that. Okay. Hey, all right. <laughs> Kyle's down. He's like, yeah, all right. All right, psychotic lesbians, you got me. (laughs) (laughs) It's, yeah, it's like, it's basically a demented uh, Little Red Riding Hood. Oh, okay. Yeah. You'll like it. With psychotic lesbians. Yes, yes. Dig it. (laughs) All right, Sage, do you want to get the next one? Sorry, I was looking into that movie. Yeah, I know, I was too. I was. (laughs) (laughs) Um, The one thing I wanted to bring up as well, because I'm a huge huge law and order svu nerd who is i know yeah. but all of a sudden i was watching it and i was like you've got to be shitting me <laughs> <laughs> and, and your face pops up for a to catch a predator-esque yes. type, type <laughs> show, and then out of the blue comes yeah. deborah messing and i was not expecting her either and i was just like my mind is completely blown right now if chris hansen came on then everything would have just ended there right. well, exactly <laughs> Well, apparently, I have the perfect face uh, to be molested and <laughs> and uh, and impregnated, especially by family members. Um, good, good compliment. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, no, I was I was cracking up it's because I used to watch To Catch a Predator all the time as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh it's in- incredible. I mean, incredibly horrible and disgusting. Um, and and incredible my friends and i love to reenact the chris hansen voice we do it on our show <laughs> it's, it's the best okay, i want to see that <laughs> see that that's that sounds amazing oh yeah <laughs> yeah that was a that was a great shoot uh because it literally filmed around my block and my call was at 6 a.m and so i rolled out of bed at 5 50 <laughs> <laughs> the trailer and uh, and Deborah Messing was was there. She and uh, Mariska Hargitay are really good friends. She was talking about their family trips together. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Any any moment with Elliot or oh Olivia? no, 
that was the worst actually, because I, you know, I, I was a hardcore fan of SVU. I have a couple of the seasons on DVD and, um, I just, I, those, I couldn't, I even rented this Lifetime movie with Mariska where she plays a detective going into <laughs> like Amish country and the girl was pregnated by her father or something. I knew I, it. I was about to say, if it's on Lifetime, stuff. someone got raped. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And, and I just, you know, love to see, uh, kindred spirits like that. Yeah. So, uh, no, I wanted to meet them so badly, but, uh, my, I was done at, um, at about 2 p.m. and then lunch was at 3 and they were coming in sometime after lunch. So anyway, but I did, I wrote a little memo and I asked if they could sign a photograph to my sister because she's such a huge fan. And, um, and I put my address down and sure enough, about two months later, I ended up getting a photograph um, and they, uh, they wrote her a little message. So uh, that was really sweet of them. Yeah. Yeah. I think she ended up just sticking it in a drawer, my sister. But no, <laughs> no, that is such a sin. I that know, sure. <laughs> that should be on fridge, on the fridge, frame. on the fridge, over your kid's drawing. Yes. Like, <laughs> I don't over care about kids. little baby Carter, but exactly. you're putting that picture up there. Oh. Oh, yeah. But no, that, they were. Um, but the you know the crew was awesome and. Um, and Deborah Messing was, she was kind of funny, but, uh, we had a, there's a, (laughs) so ridiculous. All right. So we were, um, you know, we were in an apartment in New York. And so when you're shooting in an apartment, um, you know, you have to keep everyone very separate, you know, all the crew members and everything, because you have no space and you have all these crew. So we were constantly being moved from room to room and, um, so we go up in this room and they're setting up the monitors for the director. And, um, and Deborah Messing goes, Ooh, what are those? <laughs> and, and, we're, and I'm sitting there and I can't believe it. Like I can't even, my mouth won't even open. And I'm watching because I can't, I can't, I'm thinking she's not talking about the monitors. She's talking about something else, like some, some weird thing that I can't see because she has to know what these are. And um and she looks around. And she goes, anybody? Does anybody know what these are? Oh my and I'm god! Just like, oh monitors. My god. <laughs> <laughs> and this and she goes, huh? And this girl goes, they're the monitors, so that the director can watch playback. And she was like, oh my gosh! She goes, do they always have them? Am I this old? I'm like, you were on a TV show forever. Exactly. Do you not know? How them? long was Will and Grace? <laughs> That show was on forever. I I was just I was floored. And then we were we were talking about restaurants and great places to eat. And she was talking about, you know, on the Lower East Side. And I was talking about all these places and she's like, Oh, I don't know where that is. I'm like, oh, it's it was on the Upper East Side. She's like, Oh, oh, I don't know. And then I would tell her, you know, something else, oh, what about this place? She goes, Oh, I don't know where that is. I said, That's in Midtown. What do you <laughs> how do you not and I said, you really don't know where any of these places are? She goes, oh, well, I only live, I was only downtown when I was here filming. It's like, you were here forever! <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? Wow. That you makes know. me kind of sad about Deborah Messing. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I ever, she I never really, stupid. yeah. I never had anything special for her to begin with, but <laughs> now it's, now it's completely gone. Yeah, it's kind of, um... <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I don't, I don't want to insult her, but I mean... <laughs> no, I'll insult her. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why you're on the show. <laughs> if, I, if I ever see Deborah Messing, I'm just going to ask, like, how the fuck do you not know what a monitor is? That's all I'm going to say to her. You just go, no. <laughs> yeah. Be like, I'm not going to tell you who told me this, but come on. Come on. <laughs> and then she'll say, what's a monitor? Yeah. <laughs> and then I will smack her in the face. <laughs> that was with, your, with your VHS copy of Will and Grace. Exactly. <laughs> I will buy a copy of that just for that moment in my life. So let's jump back to the woman. I know we have like, I think we have like oh, so many questions about it, but I know we got to tone it down. Um, I, I have two questions that kind of coincide with each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, would you reprise the role as Peg and... What what would you believe happened at the end when you and Socket and Shyla and the woman walk off? 
Well, I kind of know what happens. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Um, but yes, I mean, there was, you know, Polly and I definitely talked and, and everybody had talked about it, but I would absolutely reprise the rule of Peg. I think she is now just beginning or having the opportunity to live her life. Unfortunately, she's going to be doing it in the woods. Um, <laughs> and, uh, Lord knows uh, the things that, uh, that the woman is going to teach her. You wanted to get bloody. That's the way to do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, um, but I think it's just such an exciting time. For her, she's finally free uh, from from her father and from her mother in this. Um, and I think that any any life that she will have with the woman uh, and Socket <laughs> is exponentially better than what would have happened to her had she stayed there. I mean, obviously, had she stayed, he would eventually have killed the whole family. Oh yeah, um, is how I. I mean, that's never been established, but that's. I think where that was going um, was that everyone was going to die, uh, maybe except for his son. But, um, uh, yeah. But he, he definitely met his in with the lawnmower blade. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know. I was so impressed with that movie. That's what, you know, when you're shooting it, there were things and the, you know, our DP was amazing. Uh, and um, the gaffer and all, all the crew. But, you know, when you're shooting it and you just think, how is this going to work? How the <laughs> hell are you kidding me? But um, when I saw it, I just thought, well, you know, this is absolutely incredible. I was, I was very impressed, very impressed by everyone. It's, it's definitely um, Stacy and I, we, it's our top five, if not higher movie. I mean, it, two. yeah, it, two. we were so obsessed with, I mean, that's how she and I actually met was, uh, I, I got a tattoo of uh, Pollyanna of, of the woman, and then I just put it on. Um, I think I just I linked it to her, saying, "Hey, I got a tattoo of your face. That's, I'm creepy." And um, and Andrew saw and added me, and then you know, I think Stacy commented on it and said that she's gonna get one too. So he added both of us, and we added each other. And so oh we, my we, gosh! Yeah, it's it's kind of cool how we met. We met through Andrew, so that's why we had him as our first guest. And yeah. so we we actually hopefully get to meet you soon. He wants us to come out to the premiere of a. Uh, 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 jug face. Oh, kick ass. That's awesome. So we'll do Psych How on the Road. <laughs> yeah, perfect. That'd and, be uh, I'm going to need you to bring Deborah Messing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm not over that, just so everybody knows. <laughs> Two words the monitors. <laughs> exactly. Monitor. <laughs> <laughs> what are these ancient beasts? <laughs> Oh my god. I can't get over that. I'm gonna see her every time. I'm gonna watch like the Mothman prophecies or something, be like, just just fucking turn it off. I don't start, even wanna watch this. TV. <laughs> well, and, I, and I couldn't and I expected for her someone to say that and for her to be like, Oh, duh you know, I thought I guess I just thought because I smoked a lot of peyote this morning that it was my grandmother. Uh... We're on the Starship Enterprise, and on the Enterprise we have a lot of screens so we can see all around the galaxy. <laughs> well, should... Yeah, that's perfect. She would have believed it, too. She would have been right there with you going, oh, cool. Oh, absolutely. Can I be Skywalker? And then you just punch her right in the face. <laughs> honestly, honestly... <laughs> Now that I think about it, I'm going to tell my boyfriend this story, and he's going to be so happy because he fucking hates Debra Messing for some reason. I don't know why, but he hates her so much. Yeah, I really I don't know that many people that are, like, you know, huge Debra Messing. There's not really a Debra Messing fan page, you know, anywhere. Well, when he told me he hated her so much, I thought about writing her and saying, hey, my name's Andrew, which is my boyfriend's name. Like, I'm a really big fan of you. Is there any way I could get an autograph <laughs> and have him get an autograph from Debra Messing and just lose his shit. I was hoping she'd write back. I don't know if she ever would, but now it's, it's She's it's our next guest. Worth, it's not worth it now. <laughs> but, well, and you know what, what though I love is that um, her, well, I guess her ex-husband Daniel Zellman, um, who made such, you know, he made, like, They Nest and Anacondas. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, I mean, so I've just, I, I think that that's amazing. Like you were married to a director who, right, had uses... monitors. <laughs> like, you probably have those at your house. Like they're sitting there. <laughs> God. Oh Lord. Wow. Well. All right. So, are you dry with the questions on the woman, uh, Stacy? You got more? 
I, I think I'm out. Deborah Messing is beating She's, my head out. Deborah Messing has ruined this show. She has <laughs> <messed me. No. laughs> I'm never gonna I'm never gonna work with her again. Oh, they all right, here's uh she she actually just a fun trivia fact for the uh for that T V show. She did tase someone for real. What? In that scene, yeah, she actually uh, got to tase somebody. So. I've always wanted to be tased, so I don't think I'd mind. <laughs> I thought you were going to say she did it on accident, not knowing what she was holding. And just yeah. Went, <laughs> what oh. is this thing? <laughs> <laughs> we really are on Enterprise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Um, so are there any roles in the future that you have your eye on that are horror-related or even just outside of the horror realm? Um, I'm, you know, I'm open to a lot. I've, um... I would, I, I'm waiting for Tim Burton uh, to get a hold of me here because I just think <laughs> that it's about time, quite honestly. Um, you, know, you know, hold that thought. I guess I just heard this. I don't know how 100% true this is, but I guess Johnny Depp is coming to Ohio and it's close to where I am. So when I go down there and I see Johnny Depp, I'll say yeah. something to him oh, about Perfect. That. Okay. Perfect. That's thank you so much. No problem. <laughs> hey, call her. <laughs> I will hurt you. <laughs> um, no, but I'm you know, I'm open to a lot of things, but I guess um you know, I I uh I love horror and I you know, I've I've told people this before. I've told my friends this and you know, my dad's all about it, but I if I would you know, make a career out of only doing horror movies, I would be more than happy. And uh, anybody that ever talks to me, they go, oh, no, I can't believe you would say that. And I, But it's true. It is. And I have such a fond place for it, uh, you know, and it was just the happiest days of my life were, you know, watching them with my father and um, every weekend. And most of my movie collection is comprised of horror movies. And um, I. It's, uh, it, you know, I, I would be more than happy to do that. And, uh, you know, we're, other, you know, psychological thrillers, um, are definitely a favorite of mine. Cronenberg was another huge love of my life. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. When I saw Videodrome. Videodrome. I know. Uh, yes. I, I felt like I had a mouth in my stomach for a week. <laughs> yeah. When I couldn't find the remote, I was like, wait, I know where it is. <laughs> Videodrome, like Scanners was the first thing. You know, I don't think my father let me watch Videodrome. It was like my dad wouldn't let me watch two things, the rape scene from Pulp Fiction and Videodrome. Did he? Did you get to watch the aftermath where he says, I'm going to uh, get a blowtorch and some pliers and go? Yeah, 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 yeah. And get medieval. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> that line alone made me go, this movie's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know how medieval that is really, though. Blowtorch and pliers doesn't seem very medieval to me. <laughs> Right, I guess. Nah, I guess it was just for the pain, anyway. Turkey leg and battle axe. That's what I would have said. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine Marcellus Wallace? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get a turkey leg. You know? <laughs> I think you need to dub that scene. I'm going to. I'm gonna re. I'm gonna re-release it. Uh, so on our show, uh, as we, when we close out our show, we like to do uh, something called the Psycho Eight, where we ask uh, eight questions that kind of pertain to horror movies and just as more personal experiences and personal tastes in horror movies. Oh, okay. So we're gonna alternate them. Uh, mine, uh, my first one is, what is the scariest movie you've ever seen of all time? <gasps> oh, uh, you know, um, don't look now. Really. Yes, I think that was one of not for um not, I mean Black Christmas also. Oh. Was Black yeah. Christmas had my girlfriends and I like hugging each other and screaming at the top of our lungs. But I remember I watched Don't Look Now uh by myself and uh in the dark house and and nobody was home and I remember it was raining and I was absolutely just horrified with everything that was going on. I, I've always thought Donald Sutherland was creepy even when he's not trying to be. <laughs> yeah. True. And, and you know what? And I think it was probably also because I had never gotten that image out of my mind of him at the end of Invasion of the Body Snatchers with the... <laughs> 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 you, 
You know, yeah. that's I'm so happy you picked a movie that was different because a lot of times yeah. I ask people that it's it's either it's one of two movies, The Exorcist or The Shining, and there's so many other creepy movies out there. <laughs> yeah, The hey. Shining is probably one of my favorite movies just of any time ever because Jack Nicholson and Jack Nicholson and Randy Marsh both have my heart. And so <laughs> after that South Park that just aired, I was <laughs> screaming at the top of my lungs, like <laughs> just screaming, running back and forth in circles. It was the, You know, the scariest scene in The Shining, like everyone says the old woman of the twins, but I always thought it was him on the stairs saying, I'm going to bash your brains. And I'm like, no, 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 thank you. <laughs> I'll pass. Oh, yeah, yeah. It had the best twist, though, with, uh, you know, you think the guy's coming to save him. He gets an axe to the chest, and, you know, right when he walks in the door. I was like, this movie's amazing. <laughs> I was always most freaked out by him and Lloyd when they were in that bathroom. Right, yeah. I, that just the red of that, and that it was just, oh, man. Yeah. It's a creepy movie, but I'm so happy you picked something different. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Honestly, yeah. the scariest part of that movie is Wendy's face all the time. Oh, God. Oh, she- <laughs> you need to back up, our <laughs> Boyle. She's like, she's just always like, oh. Huh. <laughs> who, who, who the hell said let's get Shelly Duvall? <laughs> yeah, she, my friend and I, we we wanted to develop at uh at Kmart Shelly Duvall Couture from that movie. <laughs> <laughs> All of her outfits were like Shelly Couture. Definitely the only at Kmart. It's a Kmart exclusive. <laughs> yes, yes, and you can get like the the the. PC greasy like bangs that just a velcro <laughs> to the top of your head. Oh, that is Come on the show more often. You're so much fun. I know. <laughs> Please make me some of these bangs. <laughs> I will. I have an Edward Scissorhand wig that looks like uh, I don't. It looks like someone got shoved into a garbage disposal with the skunk. It just can't be used. So I, I can probably make about 20 from that. <laughs> oh, that would be beautiful. There you go. They're exclusives. They're limited editions. Oh, my God. Shelly <laughs> Duvall bangs while they last. <laughs> oh. I want to I run around my house with them on and, like, taunt my boyfriend with a knife. Just going, ah! <laughs> Stop me! That was her only line. Yeah. I think ah, we, that's how, we should that's take him to a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> to a doctor. Uh, um, so, Stacey, why don't you get the next one? Let's, uh, what's, let's what's, alternate. What's, all right. All right. What's the best movie you've seen in the last five years? <laughs> I've never that's seen a, that one. Yeah, that's a perfect answer, right? Oh god, that's so hard. All right, I'm I'm such a I'm such a weirdo. And it's so hard for me to tell like cuz I I I'm so bad about going out to see movies when they come out. Um but uh you know, I was I was really impressed uh with um with Looper. I uh more than uh more than I thought I would. And um but <laughs> this is so hard. I loved the movie Rango. I did. Oh, I think everybody what? did. Yeah, I, I saw that in the theater at least four times. Anything that's animated has got my name on it. So. Oh yeah. I, I and I um I think that I think that it might have to be Rango. I um I because I also you know I love westerns. That was another thing with me and my father. And I've probably seen Josie Wales more times than I care to admit. <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> And, and I, um, I was, I just loved, I loved that, that it really felt to me like a genuine Western movie, but, but with these animated characters and also just the, the theme of water, um, that I thought was so important. I'm not the biggest, uh, hippie, but, um, (laughs) but, you know, water is really seriously important. And I think that, um, you know, at the end of the day, uh, everything's going to come down to that. And um, and I thought that it was a great, you know, it wasn't as in your face as Fern Gully in the Last Rainforest. Oh, I love Fern Gully. <laughs> Help it grow, Krista. I talk it about. <laughs> I talk about Fern Gully all the time, and uh, only my friend and I are the only ones that know what it is, and we get made fun of if we start. We try to explain it, but you can't without looking like an idiot. You're like, okay, there's these fairies in the rainforest, and this ooze monster played by Tim Curry tries to come and take. <laughs> and they're like, right there, like, okay, stop talking. <laughs> 
I, I, and Robin Williams is batty. Oh God, it was so good. Yeah, so I, I'm a I'm a big slave to animated films. Miyazaki is, you know, one of my absolute favorites. But um, and I and I kind of love also that um, uh, Christian Slater was in it. Right. Yeah, his voice back <laughs> was exactly now, but he still didn't have a career. <laughs> Krista, come on! <laughs> yeah. Back in that time, Christian Slater was a hunk and a half. That, oh, did, yeah. Around did, Heathers and oh, Heathers oh, yeah. up to like 1994. Yeah, I agree. Yes. <laughs> and True Romance. I'd hit yes. it. I'd hit it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So I'm I'm going to go ahead and say that I think that Rango was my favorite movie from the last five years. Uh, what's your favorite movie that you've worked on so far? Ooh! Oh God, that's so hard. Um, oh, da, 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 da. I, I really, I probably, I would say Jug Face only probably because I was in it so much. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I mean, the woman was uh, the woman was incredible for so many reasons. Um, and, um, but I think that I, because I was able to, because I learned so much from shooting the woman, I was, I was able to start applying some of those things with this last project. And so, um, and, um, you know, and, uh, it, it was very challenging and, but I think that I loved it because of the fact that my character goes through so much hell and those are really the best things to do, you know? Um, we had, I had a lot of fun with all the horrible predicaments that Chad put me in. <laughs> so I just, you know, I love, I love being tortured. What can I say? What's, Good. uh, what's the worst horror movie monster of all time? The worst horror movie monster. Mm-hmm. Please say Chucky. He's so overrated. <laughs> God, yeah, he is horrible, isn't he? <laughs> he is. Yeah. And, and you know, I've. I've got to say that um, I'm because as a child I was tormented by trolls. I <laughs> hated them, and, and and just recently for the first time it, it was what did it for me was that I love Ernest. Um, Ernest, Ernest scared was, stupid. Yes. And Ernest scared stupid ruined me when I. <laughs> I, mean, I, I Hellraiser was nothing. Like, <laughs> was nothing. I watched Sleepaway Camp, you know, over and over again. Puppet Master was one of my favorite things in the world. Uh, the Phantasm, one, two, and three. Like, this, nothing scared me more than Ernest Scared Stupid. I, these trolls just haunted me. And, and for years, I couldn't look at it. And then just the other day, I was trying to explain how scary they were to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, no, I have to show you. I said, I haven't looked at these things since I was a kid. And I went online and looked at these pictures, and I said, Jesus Christ, what was I scared of? <laughs> I think Eartha Kitt was scarier in that movie than anything else. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how about Zelda Rubenstein? I... <laughs> That's, that's a scary one. That's a... Um, I can't believe you said Ernest scared stupid. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's aw- that is awesome. It's always the weirdest thing that makes you like the most scared, though. Yeah, yeah, and it, you know, never did anything to me. I just thought, you know, like, uh, really, these people are gonna. I love the scene at the end when the guy's in the hospital, and he like he starts pulling at his hair, like to show the grayness from right. what, from what it did to him. <laughs> Apparently, if you look at a really bright light, your hair turns white. <laughs> It's like watching the ring video. Their face is like all distorted and their mouth is open wide. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and, and honestly, probably any giant spider is just a terrible monster. Right. Like I don't uh, like spiders or clowns, but I don't mind them. But I gotta know where they are at all times. Like they can be in the room. I just gotta know where they are. Right. Exactly. Uh, yeah. What's the uh, what's your cheesy guilty pleasure movie outside of the horror genre, or even in if you have a cheesy horror movie, but. I think mm-hmm. everyone has that cheesy guilty pleasure. What's yours? Ooh, I off the top of my head right now, I'm saying Pretty in Pink. Such a good movie. Yeah, yeah that's a good one. Mom, it's, I... not, it's not even. It's not the most cheesy thing that I own, but I. I also. Oh, you know what's a really bad one that I tend to uh, start drinking games with, and then it. Um, you'll understand why they really don't go anywhere. Is uh, what about Bob? 
<laughs> um, I always say, all right, guys, we're drinking on Bob. And then after about 15 minutes, you run out of beer. So um, That's you why you to... get old Milwaukee. It's cheap and you can buy a bunch. <laughs> you just have to watch Richard Dreyfuss just lose his mind. I think that that movie actually caused him to lose his mind. I think that that's what it was. So, yeah, I would say Pretty in Pink and What About Bob are, are always the uh, the cheesy pleasures. Those are those are pretty good. My, <laughs> I just had somebody call me and they're like, you know, those movies that you watch that like every time you watch it, you just cry. And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, which one's yours? And I was like, Beaches with Bette Midler. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, every yeah. time. I saw every time I were... that movie. Someone was playing a drinking game. Uh, you, you talked about it. I don't know why I thought about it. But apparently if you put a mustache on your TV screen and every time someone falls into the mustache exactly right, you drink. Oh, that's fabulous. Oh, it's, it's like the perfect game. It's so much fun. Oh, that's incredible. Oh, I, have to, I definitely have to do that. You know what, what Stacy? I just cried at? Uh, yeah, what was it? It was Wednesday, Wednesday yeah. What is was, it? Was um, the Muppet Christmas Carol. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, when he comes okay. back and Tim's not there, and they show yeah. his little like little hat and cane on the rocking chair, I I wept. Okay, I wept. that makes. I mean, honestly, it's better than crying at beaches. But I mean, I feel terrible for even admitting that right now. But well, I, I weep a lot too. I I weep more than any male should during a movie. I get too involved with the characters. Absolutely. I mean, Babs Hershey in Black Swan, I, I cried just looking at her there. So. I, I started tearing up really bad at the end of Dark Knight Rises. That's how big of a Batman fan I am. And my fiance looks at me and she goes, really? Oh, <laughs> that's pretty bad. Yeah. Batman, Batman's dying and Alfred's there crying and I don't know what to do. Thank you. <laughs> oh, woof. <laughs> <laughs> that is perfect. Oh, I, I should probably move on. Mm. Uh, what do you think about the rebooted movies? The remakes? Do you feel good about those? Or do you think it's kind of not so great? I, you know, I mean, you can, you can show. Oh, God, I really don't. I really don't get it. I really don't. I don't understand it. I don't like them. For instance, Death Race 2000 with Stallone and, uh, and Carradine, like I, was that's another movie I was raised on, and when they did like the half-assed version of Death Race, yeah, that made me. I I'm not very vocal about these things because I, it's just this inner fire that burns deeply that will be unleashed someday <laughs> on the industry, but it really hurt. Um, and then the Evil Dead one, which I know that Raimi and Bruce Campbell are involved with, and I. I just, I don't understand it. I really don't. With, as far as, like, the Freddies and the Jasons, those are different to me because they've always been remaking themselves and um, and they've always been changing. And I think that those, in that case, sometimes it's like an homage. Um, but, but, it, but some of them, it, oh, God, yeah, it really burns me up. And in general, when dramas like the Sabrina with Harrison Ford, I mean, can, yeah. you, well, can someone just take that off the shelves and never allow it to be seen again? <laughs> Well, uh, Stacy, go ahead. Why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> and we're talking about the Evil Dead and how it, it, the trailer made it look incredibly gory and amazing, and they still have like the tree rape and all all the elements. But if you're gonna have every single thing that you did in the previous one, just keep it the way it is. Yeah. Right. It's I felt that way about Evil Dead, and I felt that way about Suspiria. Like they were talking about doing Suspiria, and if you remake that movie, I will shoot whoever does. Yeah. That yeah. is, that's single-handedly my favorite horror movie, and if you try to remake that, I will find you and I will kill you. <laughs> I know, absolutely. I know it's cliche, but The Exorcist is my all-time favorite, and if they remake that, I will just – I will never leave my house. I'll just sit on the floor and cry all day. Like, prequel. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. that terrible thing. Oh, just awful. No, I'm I'm absolutely with you on it. it it definitely, it definitely, uh, it burns me up. I mean, I feel like maybe I've seen something that was a remake that wasn't bad, but, um, but in general, I think that, that there's, they're in, they're just unnecessary. What's your, What's your decade, decade of, uh, horror movies? What's that? What's your favorite decade of horror movies? Mmm. Ah. Uh... I probably I probably watched the 80s the most. 
um, between, yeah, between like 75 and 85, something like that. <laughs> the 70s were the best. Uh, from, yeah. But then you have the 80s, the slasher started, and right. you're definitely right. Yeah, because I that was the thing is you know I mean but you know I, I also I I was very into Hitchcock as well um, for a while and um and speaking of original things um, the original Haunting I remember so good so, yeah. it was so good and um I had seen I had seen that after I'd seen the remake I didn't even really know that there was you know I was really I was pretty young when that came out and and after I saw that I thought why would they ever redo this this is terrifying yeah the black with black and white just the shadows well, you, that, yeah you never really see a ghost at all it's just bending walls and doors and it's just it's it's like the house on haunted hill you see a skeleton but like and then they remade it and apparently you're being chased by mold <laughs> right <absolutely. laughs> Yeah, and then I, you know, but yeah, as far as, um, but there were some, and there were some really great things in the eighties, and and also, you know, it, like when they start really getting creative with blood and uh, and everything, that was that was my favorite thing. You know, I love the part in Serial Mom when uh, when they see the blood when after she gets beaten with uh, I think it's a leg of lamb. Right. And she's yeah. watching Annie, and the girl goes, "It's brown. It's not like it's on. It's brown." <laughs> So I, that's such a hard one for me, but yeah, I guess if I, if you took everything away in my collection, I, I, I well, I'd kill you, but. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is, this is the big one that we like to put out at the end, but oh what is, what is something you've learned from horror movies? What is the one thing you've learned? That you'll never do in real life. Like I just, you'll never ever do it because you saw it in a movie. Um, let's see. Oh, I will never look back while I'm running. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah, that's I've perfect. never thought about that. <laughs> but, well, because in general, I, I run into things anyway. And it's like, you know, if they're, if they're going to get you, I'd rather not see it coming anyway. So <laughs> That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on the, on our show and taking the time to sit down and talk with us tonight. Yeah, it was so much fun. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Well, uh, on behalf of SciCal and uh, Stacy, I'm Kyle. Have a great night. Thanks. You too. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.